Hi, my name is Nina Ryan. I'm the CMO of ASB, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you Rebecca Walter. Thank you. I am Rebecca Walter. Oh, thank you. I am Rebecca Walter. I uh, run the Learning Garden at Red Hill Elementary, where I know a lot of you uh, went to elementary school. Um, I'm also the parent of Pierce Walter, who was here, a student here at Legacy. And I'm coming here today. I want to talk to you a little bit um, about uh, Red Hills Learning Garden, as well as Learning Gardens in general, and then also um, speak to volunteerism. My first slide that I have there shows you a picture of uh, Red Hills Learning Garden, and I'll give you a little history as far as my involvement there at the Learning Garden. When uh, Pierce's older brother, Robbie, was in kindergarten, um, as most kindergarten uh, teachers do, they give the parents opportunities to be in the classroom and help out with their kids. And so one of the opportunities that we were given as parents was to help out in the Learning Garden at Red Hill. Um, and so I love uh, nature outdoors and gladly volunteer to help out in the garden. We decided to collaborate with the other parents to figure out what everybody else was doing in the garden, um, share books, share ideas, uh, so that we could fill out the curriculum for the learning garden. I read all kinds of uh, school curriculum, garden books, came up with a whole set of curriculum that we could start implementing for the next school year. So over the years, continued to hone that curriculum. Now flash forward um, to today, my little kindergartner who I started with is now a uh, 12th grader, um, graduating from high school this year. Pierce has not been at Red Hill for four years now, but I am still there, still running the garden program. People always ask, why are you still here? Why are you still doing this? And it's because I have a passion for it. Um, I really believe in uh, garden programs, um, especially at schools. After all of my research, seeing firsthand all the benefits, and I'm just showing you some of them here, um, incorporates all different types of list, uh, disciplines in the garden. You can see here the main one that people often think of when they think of gardens is tending it. So the planting of the seeds, the weeding, um, planting new plants. As I said, the curriculum incorporates um, a lot of different subjects. And um, you can see here, uh, we do science and math, we do reading, we do journaling. But the first graders, they learn all about uh, butterflies and butterfly life cycles. So um, you can see here, this is a, a monarch caterpillar. And so the first graders learn all about the um, relationship between milkweed and monarchs. And we have a milkweed garden that's there. And I love this picture over here. We have a sign there that tells about how the Native Americans used milkweed. Um, it is in the um, milkweed garden. And if you could see at the bottom of the sign there, a monarch caterpillar. Um, and then the, the last picture that I sh the show there is probably one of the favorite things of the kids uh, that get to be a part of the Red Hill Garden, and that is our harvest parties, where they get to uh, harvest all of the vegetables that they planted in the fall, and we have kind of a little salad party, and they get to try all the different things um, in the garden. So, uh, benefits of learning gardens. The uh, first one that I've read a lot of studies on is that um, having kids be exposed to the growing, the food growing process, especially of vegetables and healthy things, helps them be better eaters. Uh, Columbia University did a study that said that frequent opportunities for hands-on nutrition learning for students, that they eat up to three times more fruit and vegetables at school lunch. They've shown that that also happens at home. Um, we have parents who say, that um, their kid would never touch a carrot at home on a plate, but when they come to the Red Hill Garden and they dig it out of the ground, even if it has dirt on it, they'll put it in their mouth because it's so exciting to be able to pull something out of the ground and eat it. So nutrition, second one, um, I talked about all the different um, subjects that we get to teach in the garden. Land stewardship, organic gardening, race reduction, composting leads to improved environmental responsibility. I'm, in, I'm big in environmentalism, so um, to me that's exciting that we're teaching kids about environmentalis environmentalism. Um, study by Cornell, so the third grade students involved in school garden programs increase their sense of responsibility and attitudes towards science and the environment. And the last one, obviously there are a lot of benefits, I just highlighted three. The last one is that we get, ex get to extend the classroom outdoors um, by offering all the subjects you saw before, science and math being incorporated, as well as data collection, um, journaling, social studies, geography, 
Um, and the last study here, Washington DC study, found that fifth grade students who attend gardens with garden programs had higher math, reading, and science scores on standardized tests. Um, so those are all the uh, benefits. This is why I'm passionate about learning gardens. All of the garden vo volunteers at Red Hill are just that, volunteers. And I put up a description, a definition up here of volunteerism, uh, the practice of doing w good work for good causes without being paid for it. I was surprised to find when I looked up some statistics on volunteerism that uh, it's a really big deal, runs a lot of the things that we all take advantage of. As I said here, Red Hills Learning Garden is run by 80 plus volunteers. That's because we like to have um, three or four volunteers for each and every garden visit as they come out so that we can have three stations so the kids can move around and do multiple activities. We also have weeding parties uh, where we need to come and clear out the garden, get all the weeds out of the way, trim the trees, do those kinds of things. So every year um, I do a lot of recruiting at the beginning of the school year in order to make sure that I have about 80 volunteers in place that can run the garden. Um, I was surprised to see that 70% of California nonprofits are all volunteer organizations, zero paid workers for them. Some other organizations that you might know that um, have a workforce that is more than 90% volunteer. So what that means is that for every one uh, paid volunteer that these organizations have, they have at least nine others who volunteer their time who do not get paid to work for these organizations. A um, couple of big humanitarian nonprofits, Red Cross, International Disaster Relief Organization. If you're in scouting, um, you could potentially go your entire scouting career without interacting with an adult that is paid. Um, the vast majority of uh, the people that work in the scouting organizations that volunteer their time are not paid. Um, sports. Um, and you sports that you do through the YMCA, uh, soccer, AYSO, um, or Little League. Uh, again, vast majority of those are volunteers. About one third, 30% of adult Americans formally volunteer at least once a year. Um, interestingly enough, uh, most of those volunteers only volunteer for one organization. They kind of have a passion, one thing that they like to do, and they do that a lot. Um, an even better statistic, and kudos to your age group, is that more than half of American teenagers volunteer at least once a year, and they tend to do um, volunteering at multiple organizations. So that's even better than your parents' generation. Uh, so why? Why would you volunteer? Why would you give your time freely um, if you're not going to get paid for it? I know you guys are a business school, right? So you're always all about the bottom line. So there are plenty of other benefits as to um, why people volunteer. Um, the number one reason cited is that it feels good. It feels good to help people out. I had a little group of um, first graders and had them pulling out things in the garden and one little boy pulled out what he thought was a weed. And at the end of it was the cutest little radish um, about the size of a pea. And uh, you would have thought that he had found gold in the garden because he was so excited about this little radish that he pulled out of the ground. And so he held it up above his head and he said, this is the best day of my life. Um, and to me, that was just like the greatest reward for all of the time that I put into the garden was that it, it made somebody else happy. It helped him. It helped kind of um, foster this love for nature in him. Um, so personal happiness up there, top point. Mayo Clinic, they do a lot of studies on uh, how to help people be healthy in their lifestyles. They found that volunteering has been proven to reduce stress and increase positive, relaxed feelings by releasing dopamine. As um, I know a lot of you are uh, thinking about the colleges that you want to go to once you graduate from here. College admissions officers say that definitely they look for volunteer opp opportunities on your applications um, when you apply to their school. They want to have students that are gonna fit in well to their campus and wanna help others on their campus. Volunteering um, improves your employability. 60% uh, of hiring managers see the act of volunteerism as a valuable asset when making recruitment decisions, according to a study performed by CareerBuilder, and also unemployed job hunters who volunteer are over 25% more likely to find work. Let me um, give you a list of um, some of my favorite organizations, all of these are nonprofits that are local here to Orange County. They all work in Orange County and all of them encourage uh, teen volunteers. These are all in the area of nature and science. Yeah, I think that's all on that. So I'll take a few questions and then I have an activity for you guys um, to, to be involved in, but 
Before that, does anybody have any questions of me? Yeah. Um, so you talked about how colleges highly value like volunteering. Mm -hmm. Do they care more about the amount of hours you have or more so like the impact you had on a community? So I, I would say the impact, and actually I was, I was looking at it, it's interesting, they don't want you to work more than 200 volunteer hours. They said at that point, they're a little concerned that you weren't really focused on other things, that maybe you're trying too hard. Um, so they say that um, you should um, try to fall within the 50 hours of volunteer work during your high school. They, they only care about what you've done during high school. Leadership is a big thing. So if you're a summer camp counselor, that's big in their eyes because you've taken on that leadership opportunity of passing education to younger younger students. Does that help? Okay, any other questions? Yeah. So for volunteer hours, would you say that colleges look more for off-campus volunteer opportunities or on-campus volunteer opportunities? Um, I don't know that they really care. I would say, um, I, yeah, I think both are important. I think they also kind of look for um, multiple types of, of opportunities as well. Um, as I was saying, um, students tend to volunteer for multiple, and that's great on your applications because you can you can continue to click through and enter in every single volunteer opportunity that you've done. But again, it helps if, if you've really done something significant um, rather than um, just show up at a, at a beach cleanup or two, right? All right. Where did your love for gardening and nature kind of start? I uh, grew up in Big Bear, so I was outside a lot as a kid. Um, and then the summer of um, my junior year, I uh, took a humanitarian trip to the country of Haiti, which is a very poor nation, um, island nation in the Caribbean. And we actually did agricultural projects there. So we worked on a giant farm. Um, we built hutches for uh, rabbits and chickens to provide food for them. And then we also got to work in a hospital. So I think that's kind of where it all started, uh, this idea of helping people um, through agriculture and food and nature. All right. So um, I have an activity for you guys to do.